What's old is new again. Welcome back to the neighborhood and welcome to one of my favorite recurring topics that we do here on the podcast. On this episode, we are going back in time to remake our game of the year list for the year 2020. Welcome to the podcast where two longtime friends and sometimes a guest talk about their favorite games from the perspective of an average player. My name is Andrew Kimball. And I'm Dylan Wren. And, and we, we are your friendly neighborhood gamers. So the idea behind this topic is that we weren't able to play all of the games that came out in 2020 during 2020. Now that time has passed and we've had time to play those games theoretically and think about the ones that we did play, we're going to redo our game of the year list with this new context. So yeah, before kind of uh, broadly explaining, you know, this topic idea, I will mention that in addition to Dylan, Aubrey is here for this episode. Aubrey, say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. Also did make a, um, a 2020 list. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Back on. Yeah. On that other, other side field. project thingy. Who's he? What's it? Yep. Yeah. So a- about a year ago, uh, Dylan and I did this for 2019 and we actually I, I went back and listened to the episode we had Joe submit his list because he was the only other uh, level playing field member who did game of the year at that time for 2019 yeah mm-hmm. so we it was kicked off by an old article that popped back up in my emails and then we were like there's some glaring omissions on this list let's revisit it and we had a lot of fun with that topic it was kind of a, a, an interesting exercise to compare how things have changed in our minds over time, what new uh, games and experiences we had played since then from that year that now deserve to be on the list, what got bumped because they were there. So this is like the next chapter of this topic. We'll probably revisit this, I guess, once a year makes sense because otherwise we'll catch up to current and... (laughs) We could go way yeah. back and be like, let's just do our games of the year for 2005. But right, 2007, you know, uh, put Halo 3 on top there, you know? But, <laughs> but that wouldn't be recreating a list. That would just be creating a new list from mm-hmm. those years, which would still be fun yeah, and probably something that we might explore at some Yeah, I was going to say, realistically, we'll go back to this well every time we run out of a topic idea, and we're just like, <laughs> you know, it'll be easy <laughs> doing a list. <laughs> Lists are lists are fun. Yeah, <laughs> they're easy, simple. I was gonna, but I do I, like this idea. I was gonna say, uh, I we were talking a little bit before the episode, but I was like, we could probably revisit this list again in a couple of years when I've played more of the games that have come out. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, same. that's why in the intro blurb I said theoretically, but yeah. also, you know, the goal maybe necessarily isn't to revisit the list, but like to play games in order to do this exercise. It's more like well, time has passed, and yeah. where are we now kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, like we've picked up yeah. games. Like a lot of times we play games much after the fact that we pick up on sale. And so, you know, sometimes we're two or three years behind or more on games that we're playing. And also, I I know at least for me in my original list, I did not limit it to games that came out in 2020 one of the big reasons we redid 2019 was because control is one of my favorite games and it was not on my 2019 list because i didn't play it that year same with plague tale yeah and so for this year like looking back at my old list there were some things that didn't come out in 2020 that were on there uh and then this year or with this redone list it I was able to keep it to just games that came out in 2020 because now I've played enough. (laughs) So So in 2020, we were all part of Level Playing Field and we did we all created our own individual top tens. And then we did a like combination of what was Level Playing Field's top 10 games of the year based on like our overlap. And Mm -hmm. so I'm going to read off that list and then we'll go through our individual lists from 2020 
And then the way we're going to discuss our current lists or the like remake versions of our list is we're going to kind of speed run slash, you know, shout out our top five or like six to 10. And then we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time talking about our one through fives, just in the interest of keeping this episode reasonably length and, uh, there's a lot of games if you if you're talking about potentially 30 games <laughs> and you park on each one could be a marathon could not a sprint a so yeah. yeah first of all the level playing field group list went like this so number 10 was phantasmophobia <laughs> as Caleb kept calling it in that episode <laughs> rough uh ghost of Tsushima Spider-Man Miles Morales Control Final Fantasy VII Remake, Spiritfarer, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Cyberpunk 2077, and Hades. And like Dylan mentioned with his list, Control snuck on there even though it was a 2019 game because I think Joe had it on his list and uh, Dylan, during the episode, slotted it into his list after Joe mentioned it because I went back and listened to that episode today. Did I? <laughs> yeah. You're like, uh, I'm going to call an audible and I'm going to yeah. bump Call of Duty off the list. <laughs> Which is fair. Totally Cause I'm looking Because I'm looking at my list right now and I think I made... No. Okay, never mind. I thought for a second that I made an 11... <laughs> a list of 11 with Call of Duty at the bottom. So... Yeah. So it's like still there. similar... Similar to how we do our lists on this show is like if you played a game that year and it was a new experience to you, we would put it on the list even if it didn't come out that year. So for my new list, uh, my new game of the year list, I think all my games are games that came out in 2020. I tried yeah. to, mm -hmm. in the spirit of this exercise, do that. But on my my list, my personal list from 2020 was number 10. Mortal Shell, number nine, Gears Tactics, which I think came to consoles that year, but had been out on PC maybe for about a year at the point at yeah. that point. Number eight was Animal Crossing. Number seven was Final Fantasy VII Remake. Number six was Miles Morales. Number five was Last of Us Part Two. Number four was Ghost of Tsushima. Number three was Hades. Number two was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Number one was Cyberpunk 2077. Nice. Yeah. There, uh, there will be some changes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my list is Phasmophobia at ten, mm -hmm. Wingspan at nine, excellent. Uh, little game called Fuser at eight, uh, <laughs> a game you can Dead no game. longer purchase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, poor thing. At, yeah, at seven was Star Wars Squadrons. Uh, at six was Call of the Sea, which I'm pretty sure squeaked onto the list because I'm pretty sure. I played that like the final week of December. Uh, yeah. Number five mm -hmm. was Animal Crossing. Number four was Hades. Number three was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, number two is Control. And number one is Cyberpunk 2077. And now that was Cyberpunk 2077 when it came out and was broken. Uh, <laughs> so Yeah, that was, that was OG Cyberpunk 2077. Yes. Uh, you did mention in that episode that phasmophobia was there representing oh, like social among games us and like some yeah, of those you others that we all played. like Among Us and all that. Yeah, and then you said the same thing for Wingspan representing other like board video games. game adaptation of board games. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like Root and Tabletop Simulator and probably some of those. So so Aubrey, what was your list in 2020? So number 10, I had Wingspan. Number four, or number four, number nine was The Sims 4. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so very awakened with it right now, y'all. Number Love eight it. was the Super Mario Sunshine re-release and the, oh, yeah. the 3D, uh, 3D release that came out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Another I think game it was you the, can't buy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that game was the only one off the like 3D All-Stars that I even like played. And I really Same. didn't play it for that long because, boy, the Joy-Con drift. Um, <laughs> next was Sphinx and the Curse Mummy. I don't know if it got a re-release in 2020 or if I just was getting back into it. It, it got a, the re-release came out in 2019. Ah, okay. I think. So, yeah. And then, um. Yeah, I borrowed it I think from you. You borrowed it switch, after yeah. I beat it, so you probably played it in 2020. Yeah. Recency bias. 
I mean, great game. Great game. Holds up. But uh, yeah. So number six, Monster Prom. Number five is Hades. Next is Phasmophobia. I had a lot of fun with that. Number three was Coffee Talk. Number two was Animal Crossing. And number one was Spiritfarer. So uh, aside from like... Animal Crossing, you can see the heavy indie like tilt that I had. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yep. So that was 2020 at the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021 when we made those lists. Now let's shift into what our new lists look like, our 2020 remake, if you will. So Ladies first, Aubrey, why don't you give us your new number 10? So my new number 10 is a game called Yes, Your Grace. Uh, it was a last minute, literally last minute edition on this list. I picked it up probably less than a month ago on the Switch with my my blood money. Um, <laughs> for those unaware, if you donate to the Red Cross, they will give you a $10 gift card, sometimes $15, depending on the shortage, and you can convert those gift cards into a multitude of things, and I always turn them into Nintendo eShop gift cards. And so huh. that's what most of my Switch purchases are with my blood money. So Yes, Your Grace is by the studio that made Not Tonight, which I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's basically like a social role-playing game, and Yes, Your Grace, you play as the king, and you have to little, like, 16-bit graphics. And you have to basically answer the requests of your people, fight off invaders, You've made a promise to a witch for something and you've promised your daughter's hand to somebody else and now it's coming to collect. And so it's like all consequences, no action. I really <laughs> enjoyed Not Tonight. I'm probably halfway through that game when I picked up Yes, Your Grace. Um, and I started Yes, Your Grace last night. So we'll see oh. how it holds up in wow. a few years. <laughs> yep. Okay. Dylan, number 10. Uh, my number 10 is Black Ops Cold War. <laughs> for the zombies. <laughs> for the zo solely for the zombies. Haven't touched yeah. the story of that game. I keep meaning to because I generally like the the Black Ops stories, but haven't touched it. Just played the zombies mode. Had a lot of fun with it. Probably played some multiplayer at some point, but that's not really why. I think I got that one with my Series X that game and so i was able to actually get in there when it released and be you know like could beat people a month or two out when all the kids are cracked at it it's not fun anymore so <laughs> that's because in 2020 we were all forced to buy like console bundles to get our hands on yeah the new consoles uh what a time unless they were buying a animal crossing switch and then it very specifically did not come with animal crossing <laughs> yep no yeah why would why would they do that? That'd be crazy. Yeah, we haven't even really touched on the fact that we're talking about 2020. I'm sure it'll come up when <laughs> Animal Crossing comes back up on our lists. But yep. what a what a time to be Ooh. playing video games. <laughs> what a year that was. Let's see. My number ten is The Last of Us Part Two. Really? Wow. I'm that's kind of surprised because no. I thought you didn't like that game. <laughs> Didn't like it. I thought it was too spooky for you. Yeah, well, it was number five when I oh. made this list in 2020. Just because he didn't enjoy <laughs> playing it doesn't mean he doesn't think it was a good game. So <laughs> Last of Us Part Two uh, kind of fell from grace on my list. And I th think it's because I realized I like other games on the list more. I think it's because... I have no desire to go back and replay that game. So like the memories are just fading over time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, thinking back on it, it's like it was a well-made game. But I kind of I kind of look back on it as being a bit pretentious now. <laughs> kind of <Yeah>. like <laughs> it's one of those like I given some time and some space, I kind of I'm like, yeah, you know, that game. Neil Druckmann is kind of like high on his own supply. And <laughs> it was also just like capital D discourse. And I've gotten so exhausted by gamers discourse. It happens yeah. like every few weeks about something different. And like, so 
part of the last of us too is like that is the story is the discourse and then it's all going to come up again when they do the tv show and cover part two so can't wait for that but yep it's still a a an experience that I think is worth trying. I think there is a lot of, you know, if you jive with that, like kind of survival combat system, that can be a lot of fun. And if you, it's an extremely high budget, well-made Naughty Dog game. So just kind of seeing it is, is worth it to a certain extent, kind of like, you know, your red deads and stuff like that. So it still made the list, but yeah, it, it, my list is a lot of shifting. Like I think Mm -hmm. the core is the same games, but stuff has Mm -hmm. moved. Yeah. Yeah, same. I think I just knocked off some stuff that I'd played in 2019 to add yeah. a couple more things. I I added one new game, which um, made one get bumped off, but everything else is just a, a shift. So, Aubrey, num- number nine. So number nine is Monster Prom. Again, it just kind of moved down the list a little bit because we didn't haven't really gone back to it much. It's a fun little party game, and we're just doing that less nowadays so it's still a cute fun time but it does on repeat plays well it's not fair to say it gets a little stale maybe kind of predictable i guess which is not a bad thing in a dating sim but yeah weird how in 2020 we had more like party game time right we didn't well i mean you had to go to work still but like my work schedule was severely limited and there's nothing else to really go do so it was like we have this monster prom game. You want to try it? And we're all like, sure. Well, and that night too, when we did it and a lot of people were committed to trying to like voice out their characters, like that was a really fun, goofy night. But yeah. Yeah. You got plenty of time for games when your work stops taking patience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was working like two really long days a week and then home the rest of the time. So mm-hmm. Yeah, my university sent me home, so it's just like, yeah, yeah I'm here for eight months. <laughs> Which was perfect for Animal Crossing, because yes. we all just kind of like could exist in there. But uh, Dylan, what's your number nine? Uh, so you guys are mentioning you only put a couple of new games on your list. I have five new games on my list. Cool. Nice. Um, so this one is also the Call of Duty was a new one. This one is also a new one, uh, and that is the Dark Pictures Anthology Little Hope. Mm. The Dark Pictures Anthology are not the best games. Like they're they're probably like <laughs> a solid like seven or eight, but they're also like a lot more fun when you play them with people. And so that was yes. back. I guess we played that early in the Your Friendly Neighborhood Gamers on stream. Um, with yeah, we streamed it. Aubrey and my sister Delaney. Mm hmm. And so we had a we had a lot of fun. We streamed that over a couple of nights. And, uh, you know, like I said, it wasn't the most memorable. I don't think it's as good as like The Quarry or Until Dawn. But it was a fun, you know, six, seven hour experience that we got to enjoy together and mm-hmm. try to keep everybody alive. So. And we did pretty good up and up until the very end. Yep. Yeah. Those are fun games. Nice. Uh. Well, my number nine is another fall from grace, and that is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Wow. Uh, so had you beaten it when when you put it on your list in 2020? No. Okay. I beat it in early 2021. I was current. You and I were both playing it. Yeah. When we made our lists, but we hadn't finished it. So, yes, the length of that game and then the like the way they structured it and then the the way that they just kind of dumped a bunch of actual assassin's creed story stuff on you in like the last hour and a half or whatever it just it's one of my probably favorite episodes that we did in level playing field despite the like circumstances of that recording but like yeah. <laughs> i thought the conversation that we had was really good about just where assassin's creed was at and When I look back, I've gone back and replayed Odyssey and I've I would probably be replaying Origins, except I don't want to like taint that experience at all. Well, no, I just don't want to dive into a big Assassin's Creed game with like shadows coming out later this year. I don't want to have like too much 
<laughs> Spe- speaking of capital D discourse, <laughs> too much yeah. fun. Yeah, I've that discourse is so silly, but yeah, isn't it all <laughs> exactly? But uh, but yeah, I just haven't. The, where I was going with that was I just have not had the urge at all whatsoever to reinstall Valhalla and jump back into that one. Like out of all the Assassin's Creed games, I I've gone back and dabbled in unity i've gone back and dabbled in syndicate i've gone back and and dabbled in even like assassin's creed 2 and brotherhood but like i just have no desire to play valhalla again so i listen to uh wood kid occasionally like some of his songs will come up on my playlist and he's got a song on the arcane soundtrack and every time i hear his voice i think of the was it three did three still have Ezio or was three someone else? Three, three was, was the American Connor. Revolution. Okay. There were three Ezio games. Yes, it was the, like the third two, Ezio Brotherhood game and Revelation. That, yeah, that was set to that Woodkid song. Every time I hear his voice, I think of Ezio and like that era of Assassin's Creed. And I'm like, oh, maybe I want to replay that. How the heck would I replay that? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> they did. They did a remastered trilogy. You can get all three of them in a pack and they're like. They look a little bit prettier and, you know, yeah. they're made for modern consoles or PC or whatever. So if you want to go back to and relive the nostalgic <laughs> glory days of the right. Assassin's Creed series. I remember having trouble with like the camera controls. I think it was yeah. different from whatever else I was playing. And so kept having the few like shooting off in an opposite direction. The controls were kind of wonky they did it they had like a specific reason why they set them up like they wanted it to match like the movement of the character like you know the buttons on the right do stuff with their right side of their body and whatever but like it what it ended up being was just like a cumbersome overly yeah (laughs) complex control scheme but aubrey Mm. number eight number eight is pokemon mystery dungeon rescue team dx wow which i think was on your like it was your biggest disappointment of 2020 when we made our lists. Yeah, they had really dramatically changed the art style. And then there were some like, quote unquote, quality of life improvements that I didn't really like at the time. But I've circled back around on it and playing it again. And it's honestly nice to just be able to play through like that story and that experience of that on a more like powerful machine have quicker access to it don't have to dig out my ds to do it and i mean i already have it so might as well play it and if i tr- if i want like the genuine original experience i do still have like my ds and a copy of that on the ds so i will yeah. let it be what it is i think you're also salty cuz it was losing you a bunch of points in fantasy critic that year yes i was incredibly disappointed because it got <laughs> very quick reviews and the thing about the pokemon mystery dungeon games is that they have really good story you make friends with the pokemon you don't just use them as tools and they were getting all these reviews straight out the gate when they'd only played like 90 minutes of it and we're like it's kind of disappointing it's kind of like boring it's not interesting whatever and i'm like you haven't gotten anywhere in the story yet made me cry at 9 years old <laughs> 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 uh, she's still salty about that one yep oh uh, it Dylan... should have been at least like a net zero not lose me points yeah dylan what's next on your list uh my my next one is also a fall from grace uh and it is also assassin's creed valhalla <laughs> bump down l- bump down five points for much the same reason as andrew where at the time I was playing it. I enjoyed it. And then I hit a game breaking bug where I was no longer able to progress the story and like was so I couldn't progress the main story. So I went and I did a bunch of like the side stuff or whatever. And like I was still having fun with that and whatever. Eventually they did a patch that like unbroke the game for me uh, and I was able to continue progressing the story a little bit. But at that point. I had not been playing Valhalla for a bit and I've just I play I like jumped back in a little bit, progressed the story some, but I I had hit that point where I was like playing other stuff had fallen off and I've just never really like I've had it in my backlog since 2020, I guess. 
uh, where I keep intending to go back and play it because I did enjoy the game. I liked the the like Norse like Viking aesthetics and everything. It was just it's just one of those things where it's like it's a very big game. I think it's like a hundred and something gigs. So like a lot of hard drive real estate. But then also it's just like I know, especially from Andrew talking about it, that it's immensely long. Uh, and I just don't know that I I want to like I want to put that much time into it, you know, and there are other things I'd rather play, I guess. And so that's that's kind of why it's fallen from grace is because I haven't had that urge to go back and finish it. It's the the one game I kept on my list that I haven't finished just because of the I did put so much time into it, <laughs> but it's one that eventually <laughs> I will go back and finish maybe, but I don't know. It's getting more and more unlikely, especially like Andrew said, as Assassin's Creed Shadows is staring down the barrel. I mm-hmm. I kind of would much rather play as those characters in that setting with kind of all the new upgrades yeah so i don't know i guess i could play ghost of shushima (laughs) yeah you could also play ghost only i didn't have to play death stranding death stranding (laughs) (laughs) running out of time too i've got five months (laughs) so like what's the penalty if he doesn't I don't know. I didn't think we'd have to make one, but we might need to. (laughs) Might need to come up with some sort of a. The whole thing falls apart. I guess there's no stakes. (laughs) Yeah. No more sour candy for you at D and D for a whole year. mm, That's not going to (laughs) happen. So I'm just. Delaney would be so on board with that. Well, that it would not take much for her to get on board with that, but (laughs) it is. It is one of those where it's just like if I win this year. I can't wait to pick some 250 hour game and make him play it, especially in a genre <laughs> he doesn't like. So it's just going to be like you an like, escalating arms race. You like third person action games. That's kind of what Death Stranding is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're just going to like binge it all at the last minute and it's going to be super miserable because <laughs> you're going to have to like. <laughs> force yourself to play just put it on easy <laughs> and just power through um oh, yeah, i see. wasn't gonna play it on anything other than easy i don't <laughs> i don't care enough about this game <laughs> is there a narrative mode can i just watch the movie you wanted to make kojima that would still take him like 80 hours so it's true. might as well play it <laughs> the game is mostly cutscene and then occasional walking <laughs> exactly my number eight is mortal shell okay all right which, you know, at the time when we made our lists, I hadn't beat it. I have now beat it. Um, I have a video on our YouTube channel about it if you want to hear my in-depth thoughts about that game. But it's a small studio, uh, Souls-like, with some different mechanics from the typical Souls formula, and then a bunch of mechanics that are like the typical Souls formula, and I had a good time with it, so kind of just it just stayed on my list i think it it moved up a a few spaces but yeah still back half aubrey uh my number seven was a little hope nice ah yeah like dylan said they're very fun to play together i think of the dark picture anthologies this one's probably had the least ridiculous kind of twist to it i think it was trauma. <laughs> that was the twist. It, it, it was trauma. <laughs> trauma and hallucinations. I'm trying to remember like all the other dark picture anthologies yeah. and like pair them together it was like and whatnot. But drugs or like mushrooms and man of Medan. Uh, yeah, it's like the fungus and the man. We're just gonna spoil all of them the real quick. Yeah. Well, we didn't get to the end of the one in Afghanistan, so maybe it was real demons. Um, mm, yeah, it's probably like natural gas or something. Probably. Well, there's. I'm pretty sure Devil in Me is actually a serial killer, but I don't. I don't know that for sure. I don't know. I started watching somebody play through it, and it was almost just hard to watch. They're more fun <laughs> to play than they are to watch. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's just, they're just like fun, kind of almost campy horror games to play through. It 
gives you like just enough like kind of tension and oh no and oh blah, like but more so when you're playing with other people because you're like I don't want to be the one to screw everything up right now. Like it's not that you're like genuinely like scared to lose your character. You just don't want to be the one who gets your character killed. Yeah. And then it's always very funny to watch Delaney be way more scared of those games than I ever expect her to be. Yeah. I'm she like does it's not a little the pressure. <laughs> No, I'm like, it's a little spooky, but it's also really dumb. Like, why are you shrieking right now? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dylan, what's your next game? Uh, my next game, number seven, is a new entry, uh, and that is Deep Rock Galactic, uh, which came out, huh. I guess, in the year 2020. Um, so Deep nice. Rock Galactic is not quite like a Left 4 Dead clone, although it yeah. follows kind of like a that sort of format where it's like you're playing you can play with up to four players uh you're working through an environment and occasionally instead of zombies it'll send like a horde of bugs after you as you're trying to like they've got a bunch of different like objectives that you can do um like six or seven different objectives so it's not just like go down into the dwarf mines and like get minerals and like bring them back to your ship or whatever. Um, there's a bunch of like other things that make it interesting, make it fun, keep it kind of changing. Um, and there's also like mutators on it, which will tweak what's going on, what kind of enemies there are, that sort of thing. But it's a lot of fun. Um, I've had fun with it. It's one that I don't think I had played at the time. I think it it may not have even been out on console at that point. It may have just been like a PC only thing that had launched in 2020 and then it came to consoles later. But yeah, it, it scratched that like between that and like Warhammer Vermintide, both of those games scratched the Left 4 Dead itch for me uh, much better than like Back 4 Blood or anything did. So so if you if you like Left 4 Dead, maybe check out Deep Rock Galactic. It's also, I think, you may have to buy it. I think it's on Game Pass, though, and it's it may be free to play, though. I I don't remember. But if it is, if you do have to buy it, it's like fifteen dollars or twenty dollars or something. So it's it's not a full gotcha. price like seventy dollar thing. Yeah. 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 Smaller. Accessible. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. We're at number seven. Mm -hmm. That is where I put Animal Crossing. Oh, wow. Not in the year 2020. It didn't hold the same. Like, I mean, it was part of the zeitgeist, I guess, when we all played it. But now yeah. looking back and like, yeah. I I played it heavily for like a month or six weeks. And then I had I have not looked back really at all. And I lost I lost that island. So oh, yeah. this moved I, up for you. Oh, did it? Yeah, it was on your old list at eight. Yeah. No, oh. it's. So we're going places. It's winning you yeah, over. It, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And it's probably still kind of it's in the Assassin's same neighborhood for like yeah, the Assassin's same exact Creed reasons. Was too long, and so it just dropped and <laughs> bumped Animal Crossing up <laughs> every additional hour. Otherwise, I mean, I guess it, it it and Mortal Shell could switch if we you know need it need it to maintain its spot. But mm. no, it just it was a moment in time. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. The way we. We all played it. Um, my wife has this year been like back on Animal Crossing in a big way. And I hopped in and played like the first four ish days on a new island and then was like, yeah, there's a ton of other things I'd rather be playing right now. And so I, I haven't looked back. But for that moment in time, like it, there's no way it couldn't be on the list of, you know, 2020 video games. Yeah. I mean, it, sure it's we'll on my list, so we'll it. talk about uh, it. Yeah, again. I mean, we we might as well just talk about it now, and then you guys can mention can be like, it when it comes up. Yeah, yep. And we talked about it. I mean, yeah, it was it was a moment in time. It was a combination of like low stress, kind of a form of escapism, a little like plot that you had a surprising amount of control over when the world felt very out of control. It was social. Your friends could come over. I remember. The <laughs> The Biden campaign had an island and they put the code out and you could like go visit <laughs> their island. Like it was yeah, surreal the way that Animal Crossing hit the zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. Like with all of the updates and everything over like the following 
year, two years that they did, it really like fleshed out in a big way. And then with the Happy Home Paradise, that helped bring a lot of mechanics into the game. It There is still something that feels like it's missing from like the New Leaf game, but maybe I'm just old now and like have found like the version that's like my version. And now all these like newfangled things, I'm like, it's fine. Honestly, it's the durability. I hate durability as a mechanic. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. It's so annoying. So annoying. That and the villagers did like really lose their personalities. They are not interesting to talk to anymore at all. And again, maybe I'm older. Maybe they weren't that interesting in Wild World or New Leaf, but I feel like I had a much more interesting time talking to them then versus in New Horizons. Yeah. They don't get mad like they used to, you know? Like they used to wander around and they'd talk to each other and then one would walk away all like sad and upset and one would be stomping around all mad. And you're like, <laughs> what did you guys just talk about? And then you go and try and talk to them like, don't talk to me right now. I'm mad. I can't stand it. This is a great about it. And they're like, now they like talk to each other. You're like, ooh, juicy gossip. And you go to talk to them and they're like, do you like this shirt on me more or that shirt on me more? And it's like this. I miss when you guys had personalities. Like what? <laughs> why, why'd that go away? But yeah, that being said, wonderful moment in time. Lots of really interesting, cool features. I think if they had just kept the personalities of the villagers, it would have been like 10 out of 10 chef's kiss. Sadly, they only reached 9 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's it's one that I have on my list. Did we say we're... I'll get to it later. But yeah, but yeah it's it was... It's on there most nostalgia wise and time and place wise, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. During during the pandemic for a long time it was kind of just, you know, like I'd get up in the morning, I'd, you know, have a cup of coffee and I'd, you know, go around, play for like 30 minutes in Animal Crossing, do some stuff, you know. And so yeah. it was just kind of like a nice, nice little thing, visiting each other's islands, you know, investing in turnips and Doing the the whole the stock market stock thing, market. you know, it scratched the itch of like collecting all of the things. I really enjoyed the like museum part of it. That was a lot of fun. Um, it was my first Animal Crossing experience, so I did not have some of the issues you guys had, where you remembered how things were different in previous games. I was just kind of like, "This is my first experience. I have have no frame of reference. <laughs> this seems fine." Yep, and it was taking it all in at face value. And it's, an, it's still like an interesting piece too, where it's just kind of like, oh, okay, like this is a, there's not a rush necessarily in it. Like you can try to rush mm -hmm. things, but it, it limits you, which I know some people would probably hate, but it was kind of nice that it, uh, with so many other games wanting you to never stop playing them. Animal Crossing felt like it was one of those where it's like, I mean, you can come in and do as much as you want, but like we're only requiring you to or like if to progress, you can kind of just do it at your own pace. There are no time limits. You're not going to miss out necessarily on stuff and you can just, you know, come back late, like do your uh, and like pull your weeds, find your money rock, yeah. find your, you know, whatever and and be done, you know? Yeah, well, and I think especially in 2020 when we were all like boxed in and it was 2020 was interesting because it was the first time in a long time that I think a lot of us felt bored in a way that we don't anymore. It's like, OK, well, we can't go anywhere. We can't do anything. All of the YouTube creators we watch are taking a mental health break. Hollywood's <laughs> shutting down like, you know, like there was, <laughs> you know, Yo, why did you say it like that? <laughs> <laughs> totally valid it's totally valid but it's also like oh hey the world shut down you're in your house you make videos in your house all the time what okay mm -hmm. and i get it i get it covid was a tremendous mental strain on everybody but so animal crossing being like yeah, it's a sandbox we'll give you some stuff to play with but unless you're gonna like time travel to tomorrow we're not gonna give you anything new till tomorrow figure it out make your own fun and I think that helped it be like 
like you said, become kind of a morning routine to like check in, do the things. Oh, who's visiting? Oh, this is interesting and new. Well, let's do that. Or, okay, yeah, make good progress towards this. Let me, you know, earn some Nook Miles tickets and order a funky pastel carousel. Like, again, it was a time and place. And I think if it had done more of like, yeah, you can make as much progress in a day as you want to, it would not have had the longevity during COVID that it did. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And my only issue now is that the the like expansion pack or whatever, isn't it like subscription? Like you basically have to do the like big tier of. I think you can also buy it outright. Yeah, okay. you can buy it outright. I want to say it's like twenty five dollars for a happy Home designer. That would be the thing that would maybe bring me back. Um, like I've jumped back in a few times, but it was one of those where it was like. I it, it it's a game that very much wants you to create your own goals and I was kind of mm-hmm. like I have done what I wanted to with my island the things that are left are just like things that would just take way too much time that and I don't feel like putting in the effort like completely yeah. ter- terraforming my my island or something like that mm-hmm. yeah. yeah for me it was about like the sense of discovery that we were all doing together because I hadn't played one since DS, so it was, there's a lot of new mechanics and things happening, and so it was all fresh, all new, we were all kind of discovering things together, we were playing it, like, all on on the couch together in a big group with our Mm -hmm. Switches, and then once it turned into a routine, and it kind of, like, hit that point in the game where it was like, I wasn't discovering new things anymore, Mm -hmm. that's kind of when I fell off and was just like, all right, well, I think I beat it, (laughs) I'm gonna move on to the (laughs) next thing. Yeah, I was going to say, because they kind of trickle it out for like two or three weeks. And then once you've mm-hmm. gotten like the museum, once you've gotten this or that, it's kind of like, OK, now I've seen everything. And then you're just kind of waiting for either the like events or they've slowly added more stuff throughout, you know, like Brewster's and, you know, whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, you got Brewster and the cooking and which it took a long time for all that to come out. And yeah, like Happy Home Designer is, I mean, was, well, Happy Home Designer was a whole different game on the DS, but um, Happy Home Paradise, the expansion pack for New Horizons, I'm pretty sure what it's actually called. It does feel like a whole separate game in like the Animal Crossing universe with the designing the islands on the archipelago and everything. Um, but I do wish it was more like Spirit Fair when it came to the recipes where you could just experiment and throw stuff together and see if that did make like what you thought it would make in animal crossing you have to discover the recipes like there's no playing around there's no experimenting you can't make this until you get the recipe right and i think that would have added a lot of fun to the to the it would have added more curiosity i guess to the game if you could create recipes or design recipes or stuff like that or plans uh Aubrey, number hmm. six. Phasmophobia. Nice. Ah. Fun spooky group game. Had a lot of fun playing it in groups again during COVID and everything. I found it much creepier than a little hope. Yep. Yeah. I didn't and like playing Phasmophobia. <laughs> could <laughs> not <laughs> could not imagine playing it in VR. Hell no. That seems like a real bad time. Especially like they gave it like hepatic. Um, yeah, like capabilities. Like so if you had like a hepatic VR suit, you could like feel no. the the stuff going up your spine or whatever. But yeah, I, again, something that had a lot of like f- exploration and discovery and like, and then it had a bunch of updates and it got really complicated. And I went, oh whoa, no, I've... Mm-hmm. Markiplier yeah. stopped playing this, so I don't know what's going on anymore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's interesting, too, because, uh, well, for one, it's coming to Xbox sometime this year, um, like it oh, is getting cool. a console release. So I was like, I'd probably jump back into it at some point. Um, but then also, it's interesting looking now and seeing sort of all of the things that have spawned off of it, like content warning and whatever the, uh, oh, what is it, cleaning detail or uh, collection detail or something. But it's all of these games that like basically were like, hey, you are a a guy going into a dangerous situation trying to like 
go in, do something and get out. And it's mm-hmm. it's been interesting to see kind of just the like that. Like Phasmophobia was the first one that I kind of remember at Lethal Company. That's what I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Where it's that that was the first one that I kind of remembered as mm-hmm. like that genre. I'm sure there was stuff that came before it, but it was kind of like a goofy thing to just go in, do with your friends, get out. Yeah. Oh, and the the proximity voice chat was I think probably what set it apart for what it was. Yeah. Because like if your friends upstairs, they can't hear you. And then, yeah, like I, I mentioned Markiplier, like watching him and his friends play, it was always really funny. So. Yeah. Dylan, what you got? Uh, my number six uh, did not move. Uh, it's Call of the Sea. I still think that that game is very cool. Um, it is essentially a walking simulator where this lady is trying to find her husband who went on like an exploration trip to a a remote island out in like the ocean. And mm. as as things like you think he's just like there or got lost or whatever, um, she's trying to find him. And as it goes on, it becomes more and more sort of like cosmic horror lovecraftian but not in like necessarily a spooky spooky way um it's more of just like because there's no like combat there's no like you're not necessarily running away from anything it's it's some light platforming and some puzzle solving and it's mostly just like a walking sim where you're learning things discovering things and i thought it was a really cool like story that i didn't really go in expecting you know i just i think i downloaded it just to try it out because it came to Game Pass and then ended up. Yeah, people were talking about it that year. So you're probably like, well, I might as well try it since it's here. Yeah. And then I yeah. got, you know, an hour or so. List. Yeah, I got like an hour or so in and I was like, oh, this is actually something that I am very interested in. <laughs> so like, I wait, thought it was wait, cool. Though. Were those tentacles coming up from out of the deep, deep, deep ocean? <laughs> so, so yeah, it's. <laughs> it's kind of like dredge is in my mind where it's kind of like oh cool like a little fishing game uh and then it's like but also what if we mixed in lovecrafty and stuff you know so um and i'm like i am on board dylan really likes experiencing horrors beyond his comprehension pretty much pretty much you know (laughs) my number six is another one that we'll uh park on because this is where i put hades Oh wow! Wow, that really? is surprising. That's kind of low. Why? <laughs> so there's a few reasons. I guess there's really only like one reason. And did we beat Hades in 2020, or did we beat it later? When did we do our Hades? I've never episode? beat it. Okay, but like you beat Hades, you just didn't beat Hades like eight times or whatever, right? Yes, I've never beat Hades, and that's part of why it got bumped below the rest of the games on my list. They've, yeah. They're all games I've completed. I have gone back and replayed Hades, and I think it's a really excellent roguelike, and I really like the the art and the characters and all that kind of stuff. But it's one that like I get the urge to play, and I'm like, maybe this time I'm going to do it, and then I'll play it for a few days and then I end up putting it down for other games and I I never like stick with it to get the like eight runs or whatever you need to actually see credits. Yeah. So it's, it's a really good game and there's, I could justify swapping it with probably number five or some, probably that's about as high as it would go. But yeah, I just, I really can't say anything bad about it. I think it's still just it's it's like the best of its genre, but that's still a genre that like I've only really clicked with a couple that I've like gotten really into like uh Hades and Dead Cells probably as far as like roguelikes and the perspective is still just not my favorite perspective in games. Like that top-down perspective, I just it's just it's probably my least favorite perspective but like i can get past that with hades because everything else is so good and i still like i really like that game it's still 
I don't remember what, if we did rankings or ratings on LPF when we did that episode on Hades, but I'm sure I gave it like an A or something. So yeah, it's just, it, uh, it had to go here. Yeah. I mean, it's on my list much higher. Yeah. Um, I just recently rolled credits on it. I'd circled back to it. I had bought Yes, Your Grace and like one other thing on my Switch. And while it was downloading, I was like, well, let me like scroll through. And I was like, I just started another playthrough of Spirit Fair on my computer. I don't want to like do one on my Switch. Oh, hey, look, there's Hades. Yeah, let's hop in there. And this was probably, I don't know, two and a half, three weeks ago. Probably three weeks ago. And I had cleared Hades once. And then the next time I tried, I got to him, but I couldn't beat him. Mind you, I play in baby mode. I've played in god mode. I've got like 72% damage resistance because I've lost in god mode so many times. <laughs> um, and I have four death defiances. So I am not impressive by any way, shape, or form. And so I looked back and was like, okay, well, what did I beat him with the one time I beat him? And it was like, oh, Melthon, the twin fists. I'm like, ah, yes, the thing where you get in close and just mash buttons. Yep. My play style. And then I just ran it. I've just been playing with the twin fists ever since. I've done a couple of the like challenges where you get less money or like challenge modes where you have to beat it in like so many minutes or whatever. My fastest time is 19 minutes beating a run. And then I got through the like, I now am like, ah, oh, yes. Uh, Athena, yes, I would like a boon from you. Uh, Zeus, yes, I would like a boon from you. Artemis, yeah. Dionysus, I really don't care about you at all. Like, like I'm <laughs> to the point now where I like have boons that I gravitate towards and like builds I'm hoping to get kind of a thing. So yeah, it really clicked with me. I was always playing it for the story anyway. Like the gameplay was kind of something I had to fight my way through a little bit. Right. I haven't gotten to the end. It's a nice story, <laughs> <laughs> you know, kind of thinking back on it. By the time I was like, I got good enough at it that like I was able to get a lot of the story information. I like it was I was getting enough dopamine from beating it that I was like, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fin finish your talking. I want to do another run like kind of a thing. So, yeah, highly recommend it in baby mode. It's a great time over here in baby mode. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's on my list as well. It did move down a tad bit, but it was it's one of those where for me, my ultimate goal was always to beat Hades. And so when I did that and then like found out like, oh, I have to do this, you know, however many more times in order to mm -hmm. to actually like do it. Yeah, I was kind of at that point where I was like, I don't know that I'm like. Like there's other things I would rather do than kind of just replay these runs, you know, over and over again, even though I know that like I can do it. It's one of those where mm -hmm. it's like, well, I beat the boss. So it's kind of like, yeah, and and like it's still a fun game. I still enjoy it. It's still on my list. I would still give it a good rank. It's just one that I haven't really felt the urge to like go back to. I, I think I, mean, I yeah. beat Hades. I, I beat Hades. I think I maybe did a few more runs and then I was like, all right, I am done with this game. <laughs> um, so uh, I do appreciate the the God mode. I think more games should have that to me. To me, that could solve every game difficulty discussion and challenge discussion sure. because it's just like a it hey. scales beautifully to the, just the level of assistance you need. Yeah. Well, and especially if they made it a little bit more dynamic or something where it's like it, every time you beat a boss, maybe it goes back down to ultimately like zero percent or something like that. So that it's, you know, it like you said, it finds that exact right spot for you, kind of like your handicap, basically, in like golf, where it's just kind of like this is how I play this game. You know, I think you could uh, I think more games should do it because also I I don't. I'm not a programmer, but it seems like adding in like a percentage scaling thing is probably not a ridiculous fix. Um, so if you can do it in the way that it's done, it feels like you should be able to do it in the inverse as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and it's kind of like tip it back. Well, but it's one of those things, too, where it's like it just I like that it gets one percent 
it gives you 1% damage resistance and, you know, you do 1% more damage. You know, it's not, it's not like, oh, easy, 20%, <laughs> medium, whatever, hard, you're taking more damage or whatever now. it It's literally like, hey, why don't you just do this mode and it'll scale nicely. So there was some game where if you like failed two or three attempts, it would like scale down to super easier for you. I was in Justice 2. That's right. God, it was so <laughs> annoying. It would, it would get way too easy. <laughs> yeah. So, like, so incredibly easy. Also, while we're still in the parking lot, the soundtrack. No. Oh, you yeah. said we are going to park on this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the soundtrack is so good. And it's, like, everything that I think I would just, like, listen to on a playlist as, like, the more I'm thinking about it. Because you've got the, like, instrumental metal which is uh-huh. like just like my favorite kind of metal, really. And then you've also got the like sad, mournful songs that Orpheus sings. And like, that's also my thing, like instrumental metal and sad boy singing a song. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a great, a great soundtrack. It's so good. I, I am looking forward to Hades 2 when it eventually comes out of early yeah. access and it's getting a full release. Like, that's going to be. Like I am, I am excited to like the gameplay I've watched makes me think it's not going to be really all that different. Like there's some new weapons there's some, but like the gameplay, like you said, it's still the same camera perspective. It's, you know, well, it's same of, perspective, but she does function differently. Yeah. Like her, she has different tools and I can't remember exactly what it is about. She doesn't dash like Zagreus. She does. Like she has a different move that seems like it could fun- like it will play yeah. it will feel fresh and I'm excited for yeah, that too. Exactly. Like it's it's still gonna be in that same style of game, but yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. So I, I Hades didn't turn me off enough to the like genre or whatever. Like it's not like I got to Hades and I was like, okay, I'm done and I'm never playing one of these again. It's more so just like, all right, I'm ready for Hades too. All right, well, uh, that was the speed round, Aubrey. Let's uh, really <laughs> dive into the rest of these lists really now. What's your, well, what's you know, your number five? There's there's a lot we could talk about with my number five pick, which is, um, of course, Wingspan. All right, Dylan, what is your number five? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll just restate it again. One, it's a wonderful board game. It's yep. lots of fun. Many different avenues you can take to get points. Like, it. It is as complex. Well, that's not true. It's pretty complicated. I was about to say it's as complicated <laughs> as you make it, but that's not true. It's kind of complicated. Yeah. And then the digital version of it is just, just the perfect adaptation. You get yeah. the bird calls when you click on the cards. You get this lovely like guitar, like background instrumental, lovely scenery, and you're literally just playing the game. It's on iOS now for only like ten bucks. Like, it's just, it's great. It's a good time. Um, and it's really nice to hop onto with a friend and just like chat too. Yeah. And it's, it does a lot of like the bookkeeping. It does all the setup for you, which is nice. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, does all that's the math something. at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's something. Clarify that I, some rules. Yeah. I appreciate all of, of that part about board game, like digital adaptations of board games is like, you know what? I don't. Especially like, you know, Gloomhaven or something like that, where it's like, I don't have to spend an hour setting all this up. I can't just play it online, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Uh, and Wingspan. Sure. Wingspan is a great one. Very, very solid game. Mm-hmm. Had some fun playing it. What's your number five, Dylan? Uh, my number five is Hades, which we just talked about. Oh, so okay. Nice. Hades, Hades <laughs> What's your bumped number five, down. Andrew? <laughs> Uh, my number five is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Okay. Okay. So that one just crept up a little bit. Uh, it's a smaller Spider-Man experience. Um, but they gave Miles some cool new abilities. He has his like electricity abilities. He has a much more, I mean, both games, obviously Spider-Man is like, he takes care of New York, right? So it's not like a, a global superhero, but Miles is even like more focused on like his neighborhood. So he kind of has like that friendly neighborhood vibe, whereas Peter has kind of become an Avenger or whatever at this point. So have you seen that meme? That's like, 
the Justice League protecting the world, the event or like the Avengers protecting the world and like Captain America protecting America. You got Spider-Man protecting New York and then you've got Daredevil just micromanaging the hell out of one neighborhood and yeah, <laughs> Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. kitchen. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how Miles Morales is. Yeah. He's, um, you know, he's just focused on his his area. Obviously, you get to play in the whole the whole New York map, but it was Christmas in the game. So it had like snow on the ground and everything decorated for Christmas. He has like his like sweatshirt uh, costume you can get for him and stuff. So. Uh, and then the story, it wasn't as good as the first game, but it w- it still was like emotional and, and resonated and, you know, did what it needed to do. And I think I look back on this one more fondly now that Spider-Man 2 has come out and that game's like story just didn't really work for me. Um, and then seeing how they incorporated Miles into that alongside Peter was was really cool gameplay wise and was probably one of the stronger parts of that story. So I think Spider-Man 2 maybe has like increased my opinion of Miles Morales, but I enjoy playing all, any of those three games. I'll play them any day. They're just a ton of fun to play. So that's uh, my number five. Aubrey, what do you have for number four? Uh, number four is Coffee Talk. Okay. Uh, a coffee-making... RPG like sim type thing, hard hard to. Fit yeah, you couldn't it really describe it in 2020 either. No. I was going to say I always <laughs> thought it was like a dating sim or a visual novel. I didn't realize it was actually like you were doing stuff. Well, you don't have to do stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, you, like, you open a coffee shop in Seattle, like, kind of in the future, but it's also like in a fantasy world. So, like, fantasy creatures are real, and your friend. Yeah, I was going to say. Wait, it's Seattle, there... but there are orcs and there are elves. Yeah, yeah like the Will exactly. Smith movie. And oh, mm, a little more optimistic than the Will Smith movie. And then like there's <laughs> uh this like she's a succubus and he's like a vampire and they're having like relationship trouble and so they like no. will both come in and talk to you and then like there's an orc who works as a game dev and then she makes friends with this like nearly so it's just this cute little slice of life i guess we'll call it like a slice of life sim and then you make coffee for them when they're in your shop but it's mostly you talking to them but you do make coffee and you can like it's a whole like game element of doing like latte art and there's a side plot of figuring out like a certain drink for one customer because he can describe it but he doesn't know what goes into it and it's just like a nice little story, lovely little slice of life experience. Sounds so unappealing to me, <laughs> but I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> I played it in an Airbnb in a hobby vineyard in the middle of South Carolina after a much needed vacation working in healthcare during COVID. So that's probably why it has such a fond place in my heart. Right. Very situational. And I haven't really gone back to try and play it to see if that was the case. Nah, don't ruin that memory. Exactly. (laughs) Let it live there. I just have fond memories of being able to sit down and play a video game front to back and beat it in like two days with no interruptions. (laughs) Cool. Dylan, what's next for you? Uh, My next game, number four, uh, moved up one spot. Uh, We've talked about already, but Animal Crossing. Nice. Hmm. Basically, Hades and Animal Crossing flip flopped because I have gone back to Animal Crossing. I have not gone back to Hades. <laughs> so Valid. make makes sense. Yeah. Uh, number four. This is my one new game. Mm. Any guesses on what it is? Dylan's pro- Dylan probably could get it. I don't know if Aubrey would. I'm trying to think of games that came out. Uh, shoot. Persona no. Five. Uh. No, that game <laughs> was way before Royals. 2020. I don't know. Royal came out in 2020. Uh, this is the Demon Souls remake. Oh, I forgot Demon Souls was a launch. The remake was a launch title. And I didn't have a PS5 in 2020. I didn't get it yeah. till sometime Probably in 2021. January or February. Yeah. So uh, yeah. it's the only well not the only from soft game but probably the only like souls from soft game that we haven't 
done like content about because <laughs> Dylan hasn't played it yet. But it's not my it's, fault it's, they lock it on a console I don't want. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good remake. Like the the bones are still there and they're still like there's a gargoyle fight, of course, and it's really yeah, frustrating because it's, it's on this tiny bridge that you can get knocked off of super easy. And you know, there's some there's some pain points like that. There's like a gimmick fight that's super easy, and then there's like a gimmick fight that's super like clunky and and awkward. But the majority of the game really holds up. The The way they like structure the levels in the world is really cool. And then Blue Point being able to take the bones of this game and just focus on making it look amazing. Like Elden Ring looks great, but it's mostly for its art direction. This game blows it out of the water like fidelity wise. Mm. And there's just like, the way the characters move and when they do their attacks and like kick the enemy off of them and stuff, it's just, you can tell they put a lot of care into like the small details. So it's just a really fun experience to play kind of like the bones of like where FromSoft started their soul's journey, but have it look like the most modern game you've ever played. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's always weird, so, that blend of like, this is clearly old game mechanics, but it looks great. They did update some of the like more obtuse and clunky mechanics, either mm-hmm. like explaining them better or kind of tweaking how they function. Because there is like ways to lock yourself in and out of like world states and stuff like that. And and they they have like a whole screen on the pause menu about how like that works and stuff like that now. So they did kind of give it a few quality of life things. but yeah, just. When I did play it, I think it was around like Thanksgiving of 2021 when I finally got it. And it was one of those games where it's just like, I just played nothing but that till I beat it. And I had a really good time with it. You know, still a few pain points, but it's yeah. it's one that I've gone back to a little bit. It's one that I'd love to do another like full replay with a completely different build. But yeah, Demon Souls uh, was the only major shakeup and it bo- booted Gears Tactics off my list. Ah. Uh. Gotcha. So, uh, Aubrey, number three. Uh, number three for me is Animal Crossing New Horizons. Nice. Uh, yeah. I, we... That means there's more than just one above it now. I yeah. know. That's kind of crazy. Um, yeah. I mean, for all of the reasons I kind of listed before, um, I think I've come to the realization that I will circle back on a story before I circle back on a sandbox. I'm definitely more interested in re-experiencing a story than I am game mechanics. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's Animal Crossing. I love it. I love the the series. And I've jumped back into it, and I've put buku hours in that game. <laughs> you had put 300 when we recorded our <laughs> Game of the Year episode in 2020, so you're probably up to like 1,200 now. <laughs> I don't know about quite that much. But yeah, it's definitely a... Uh, I mean, it's a beloved one, and it will probably make favorites lists for years to come. Yeah, makes sense. I would be, yeah, I was going to say, I'd be surprised if, like, we couldn't, like, if we revisit 2020, if it's ever not on a 2020 list, you know? Like, it it seems like it was 2020. Yeah. (laughs) It seems like one that's always going to be on the list if if it's, its spot may vary, but it, I, I couldn't make a 2020 list without putting it crossing on there so yeah it's just such a moment in time and also again the music great it yeah the music was good the music is the thing i'll hear it and be like should i play animal crossing and then i do for like a night and i'm like yeah nah i'm good yeah but the music (laughs) is so good the music i mean it's the music triggers that time and place in your mind so it's like uh, yeah yes memories It, it puts you right back there and it's just such perfect like ambient background music too when you're doing other stuff as we've been talking about animal crossing i've realized what i want it to have and it's not a feature for everybody but i want it to like have prestiging or something i want to empty out my museum and go catch all the bugs and fish again but i can't so (laughs) yeah i never filled it up the first time so yeah i think i'm missing like a couple of things from the diving that they added (laughs) <laughs> but right but it's it's one of those where i'm just like i want 
to do like that was my favorite part of the game was going around collecting all of those things and now that i can't do that anymore. i mean they do fishing tourneys and bug offs every season you could yeah. get the gold trophy and all of those yeah there you go <laughs> i He's like back in. i like i like seeing it go from like there are no fish here and then this is a nice bustling aquarium <laughs> that's what i want well, I want to hear what your number three is. Uh, so my my number three is Risk of Rain 2, a new game on my list. It uh, That's a game that we played um, like back when we were streaming, and I had a good time with it, and I'm pretty sure I have it installed still. And it's one that I'm like, I should jump back into that, and I just haven't. I just don't ever do it, but it's like, I really only have good things to say about it. I just haven't yeah. gone back to it for whatever reason. Yeah, because it's it's a nice little like indie sort of game. You, you start off, you do a run. Uh, it's kind of a roguelite sort of situation where you run around the the level trying to find the exit, um, but you're also trying to like kill as many things and open as many chests on that level as you can so that you get money so that you can like buy little upgrades that you know, I'll do things, you know, some of them are like, it shoots a laser out of you, or it has a little turret that follows you around, or it adds to your crit damage or whatever. And all the while, as the game is going, it keeps ticking up like the difficulty of the enemies. And so ultimately, you're trying to get through, I think it's like three or five worlds. And then you get to the final world where you fight a boss. And if you beat the boss, you win that run. And there are a bunch of different characters that you can unlock as you go. There are a bunch of secrets to discover throughout the game. Um, So it's a lot of fun. I have enjoyed it a lot. I've played it on Switch and Xbox. It is a very good Switch game. But I I definitely... And the music is stellar. Uh, If you want to hear a track from it, go check out our music episode. I think there was a... One of the tracks yeah. that I brought to that episode was from this game. So the it's yeah. a very rain like formerly chill. known as purple, right? Yes. Yeah. So very nice track. Good choice. Yeah. I didn't realize that came out in 2020. But yeah. A, I think it was like early access one. 2019, but fully came out 2020. Right. Makes sense. Nice. All right, Andrew, what's yours? My number three is the opposite of what happened to Assassin's Creed, and this is where I put Final Fantasy VII Remake. Oh. Wow. It's a game that that in- Shot up your list? Yeah. Yeah. In in 2020, it was a game that I had attempted to do a YouTube Let's Play of and had played it over the course of- I don't know how many weeks and months and was trying to like do commentary while I played and it was a really stupid idea and I can't believe that those videos are probably still on YouTube. But recently, last year, getting ready for Rebirth, I went back and replayed it just as a normal video game, like slumped into my couch for long hours at a time and (laughs) had a really good time with it. I enjoyed it way more. Uh, The whole experience was a ton of fun. There was definitely some annoying little like bloat things and a few little sticking points that that hold it back from being like S tier. But I really I had a good time revisiting it. Uh, Caleb and I did a whole episode on remake and rebirth this mm-hmm. year so you can go back and get our, our our deeper thoughts on those if you're interested but yeah remake i think up, upon replaying it uh bumped up in my my opinion of it and then in a post rebirth world i think it <laughs> looks even better <laughs> yeah cool so yeah, aubrey that oh go ahead as i was say it's it's one that is in my shout out list of like if I ever eventually play that game, I, I have to resubscribe to uh, PS Plus <laughs> to be able to access it anymore because they don't give it to you forever like Xbox does. But uh, it's one that if I ever do get back to it, I would expect it to maybe bump off like Call of Duty or something from my list because I can see it being good enough that it winds up in my top 10. But it's one that I played for a few hours and just 
could not get into. It was just, it insists upon itself, Lois. It insists upon <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah, you really have to kind of get into the groove with the combat system and also just be in the right mindset for like a really ridiculous anime setting yeah. and story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that, I imagine that that game feels a lot better when you can sink into the world and kind of just accept everything at face value and not oh, yeah. have to have an opinion and then words to say about that opinion while you're playing it for sure. Yeah, that taught me I'm not like a let's player, so. Eh? Um Aubrey. Number 2. My number 2 is Hades. Nice. Very possibly recency bias, but Again, as I stated with Animal Crossing, I think their like ranking shifted because I realized I will I will replay something for story before I replay it for gameplay. And yeah. Hades has a much stronger story. And then a lot of fun little details. Like every time I would go through Elysium and I would fight Theseus and the bowl the of Minotaur. Yeah, the bowl of Minos. I wanna say Minos, his name yeah. is Astrius or Oh, yeah. Astarius. It means like little star or something really sad. Like the whole story of the Minoan bull is just sad and messed up. But anytime you fight them and you beat them to a bloody pulp and send them back to hell from which they came, there's one little shade who's on your side. And so like in the sea of all of the blue and the banners for them and everything, there's one shade who's got a little red banner for Zagreus. And if you go over there, Zagreus will be like, that's for you, little shade. or that's the one for you or thank you for your support or whatever. And he's got the little like speech bubble of just a big old smiley face pop up over to him every time you pop over to him. Yeah, so I never every noticed time, that. Every, every time. Well, I noticed that after I beat him, that like that little banner popped up. I'm like, oh, I have a fan. And so then <laughs> every time funny. I every time I beat him, I pop over to there. And so it's like little details like that or or Dusa or the way that you don't really fight Cerberus. I've beaten um Karen car on like twice now that's pretty fun having that like moment where you can steal from him and you go into a combat thing and it's literally like a record scratch and he like turns and looks at you and after the the second time you do it zagreus is like so let's just say when i steal from you it's me saying that i want to do this fight with you again i think it'd be really fun also hermes bet me that you know I couldn't beat you two times in a row, so maybe we try again type thing. And it's it's there's little bits here and there, the stories that you get going through with the like Sisyphus and Eurydice and Orpheus and Achilles and Patroclus. Like it's as a Greek mythology kid, it's very rewarding. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Dylan? Number two. Uh, my number two is another new entry on my list, and it is Factorio. I don't know. Which also. Think about that. <laughs> it is a game where you build a factory. I was going to say, ask your husband, Aubrey. <laughs> I'm sure he, he knows what <laughs> Factorio is. <laughs> uh, basically, you crash land on a planet, and it's it's like a little survival game, but instead of like Minecraft, where you're just kind of like you know, building your little house. This one, it's like, okay, you build like a smeltery and then you figure out ways to like automate it. So you have these little robot hands that'll like take things and put them into the smeltery for you. And you can create like conveyor belts to like, it's like, okay, it comes out of the smeltery and it goes into this next thing that builds this, which then, you know, it's, it's a very satisfying, like, I started from nothing and now I've created this like factory that's creating like nuclear warheads to fight these (laughs) evil bugs that are trying to kill me, you know? You know what this planet needed? An industrial revolution. Your ozone is looking too thick. (laughs) Basically. Um, And so uh, it's a lot of fun. I have fun with it and just kind of like putting things together. And, you know, it's it's it. Reminds me a lot of like just kind of Legos where you kind of are Mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm I'm building this and now I'm building, you know, like now I can move on to the next thing that I'm, you know, building and tying it into it and stuff. So um, I had a lot of fun with it. I've been, you know, playing it off and on uh, in the years since uh, 2020. 
I forget when I picked it up originally, um, but it's been fun. Um, there's an expansion coming out later this year um, that'll take you to new planets and stuff. So I'm excited for that. But yeah, it's it's one that I I think is a very, very good game. I don't think it's ever gone on sale either. I think it's always just like this is our price. Uh, pay this price if you want to play the game. Uh, and it's good. It's got that Nintendo vibe where it's good enough that so many people do. <laughs> so mm. interesting. But yeah, it's it's not a game for everybody, but it is a game that very much scratched my like, I want to put this puzzle together and figure out how like here is the the item that I want to create. How can I automate this process so that I always have this item? Resource management is so fun. Like genuinely. Yeah. Very solid game. Andrew, what's your number two? My number two is one of the most visually beautiful games I've ever played, and that is Ghost of Tsushima. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, They were really smart with their simple color palette, which just really made everything pop. Uh, But uh, outside of that, it has a really fun combat system. It's got a big open world to explore and go do side quests and a fun cast of characters that really grows on you and then an emotionally impactful ending. Uh, It plays kind of like the like an open world version of the old Assassin's Creed uh, and kind of the new Assassin's Creed games, too, with like how the stealth works. It's a very simple and straightforward, but it gets the job done. But on top of that, it has a very kind of Arkham stance based um, combat system. Mm -hmm. And then it has a couple mechanics that lean into the samurai angle of like, you can walk up to a fort and six grunts come out at you. And if you press the button at the right time, you just like hack through the first couple of them before you start like fighting for real. Um, And then they have like samurai battles where they're set up like duels and it plays out more like a fighting game, almost Mm -hmm. kind of on opposing sides of the screen. And those play out a little differently. And then a lot of just kind of, zen and relaxing rewards for exploration like you follow a cute little fox and it leads you to some you know collectible or you one of the things you can discover in the world is just like a a spot where Jin will sit down and write a haiku while some like calming music plays and so it's just a really good that. and in some ways unique and breath of fresh air game but in other ways a very like comfortable and familiar classic open world like adventure so it it's a game that i have purchased the ps5 upgrade for and i've played like the opening hours uh, and then something else like came out and pulled me away from it but like i have the itch to go back i'm i'm at the point now where i'm ready for a replay of it i just haven't jumped in like fully yet yeah 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 it's it's one that I am looking forward to playing just because it seems very up my alley and I fully expect it to move its way up this list eventually. Once you actually experience it. (laughs) Yeah, when I do actually experience it. So I think the one thing holding me back that's like been holding me back from jumping in full force on it again is just that it is big and long and a lot of like there's a there's a lot of fun to be had in it but like it's at its best towards the back half both in like character quests and main story stuff and you're at your full abilities and powers and stuff like that so it's like the beginning feels a little bit slower knowing what's to come like i think on a first playthrough it's not like you're kind of progressing at a natural pace like they're introducing new things to you but like me kind of know it like feeling handicapped early on because i know you know the full which i guess i think i could probably just do a new game plus except is there a new game plus mode yeah i don't know if like i don't know how that works with the like ps5 version if that's like a separate save so all right we've made it number one aubrey talk (laughs) about the game that is not dylan and i's (laughs) yeah (laughs) So my number one is Spirit Fair. What? 
No. Crazy. <laughs> who who would have guessed? Honestly, this game is battling it out with Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess from like my favorite game of all time. Wow. I know. Twilight Princess has such a nostalgia factor for me that I don't know that Spirit Fair will ever truly unseat it, but Spirit Fair has a gameplay loop that grabs me and holds me for hours. It has characters that I love and return to every time. It has like beautiful music. It has lovely visuals. It has enough of like a challenge of certain tasks that it can be a little more like collectory or like self challenging, not quite speed run, but that kind of energy to it. It has a fishing mini game. It has a fishing mini game. Sometimes you <laughs> fish for tuna and they're really hard to catch. And yeah, and just going back to it every so often with just as I like grow and get older and like learn more and experience more life and I'm able to look at things from a new perspective. Um, I've been also replaying that recently for uh, a video <laughs> I will hopefully go out soon um, if I can ever really pull the jumbled mess of my thoughts together and vomit it out on a page. What a, yeah. What a sell. Um, <laughs> With that energy, I can't <laughs> wait to watch it. <laughs> well, because like when I played it in 2020, like, I, you know, I work in a nursing home. 2020 was awful. They were dropping like flies. And so there was like so much grief to process. And I'm not trying to get too specific with my work, but I'm not in hospice. Like it's not expected for these people to die. Like, you know, they will die. And sometimes hot take, it's probably better for them to move on to whatever's next than continue their rather painful existence here on earth. But the way that it encapsulated the like how mundane it can be and how like boring and dull and like, yeah, I'm doing this for you. I'm getting you your dinner. I'm you know, doing this favor for you, whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like, whew, now they're leaving you. And it's like, wait, hold on. Like I was busy doing this task and now I'm out of time with you. Like I, on this like recent playthrough to try and like put myself back in that headspace and like really puzzle it through. And you played it, Andrew, right? Very briefly. I Very didn't briefly. get to like any major story content. Yeah. Did you get to the hedgehog lady? No. Like wow. I you really didn't get very far in it. No, I probably played for like one afternoon, like a few hours. Okay. Well, there's a character that everybody's all like, oh, she makes me cry. It's a little hedgehog lady. And she's, you know, an older woman and she slips and falls on some ice when you're doing like off on a little adventure with her. And then she starts to have memory problems and some mood swings. And then you eventually have to dress up like her daughter in order to like take her to the Everdor because she's just that confused. And on my like fifth playthrough of this game, and I'm like, oh, I need a spirit flower to get this upgrade. So I can go do this task for like so and so. Okay, who's like, who can I progress through their story so I can take them to the Everdoor and get this upgrade? And I was like, oh, Alice, Hedgehog Lady. Her story is really brief. This will be super quick. Let me like power through all of her quests real quick. And I'm going through it and I'm like trying to remind myself, like, slow down, be in it. Don't just rush through it. And then she has her little slip and fall on ice and I just get immediately choked up. And I'm like, why is this still getting me? Why is this still getting me? I've played this so many times and somehow it still like reaches up and like grabs me. So until it stops doing that to me, it's going to be my number one. God, that sounds awful. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let me go into this experience I know is going to make me sad. But in a, like a good cathartic way, not in like a Grave of Fireflies way, but in like a Godzilla minus one way. Yeah. Two it's like things I somebody... don't have reference for. <laughs> it's it's like somebody being like, yeah, my favorite movie is My Dog Skip. I watch it all the time. And it's just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, you, everybody processes like those things yeah. differently so like if it, if that's if that works for you if it's cathartic what that yeah. i'm glad that it works for you i feel like if i if i had the same emotional response playing it once that you're talking about i don't think i would <laughs> want to go back and replay it again i'd be like that was an experience that i you know i can now say i've done and talk about and 
you know, maybe there was some good that came out of it, whatever, but I don't want to do it again. <laughs> I don't want to like experience that again if I can avoid it. So, mm. and again, like the gameplay loop is so perfect for me though. Like it's lots of like straightforward, fairly simple quests, resource yeah. management, which I love slightly puzzly, slightly platformy. Like it, it like Disney Dreamlight Valley, it was like very much the, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy, like, and I'll do this one, and I'll do this one, and I'll do this one, and I'll do this one. And it's finally like, Joe, I have to go. I have an appointment in 30 minutes. I have to get off this, like, pull me away from this computer because I'm just going to, like, keep doing one more thing, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. So, yeah, <laughs> it is just the perfect storm of, like, everything that gets me. Resource management and sad death. <laughs> um <laughs> Well, you ready to talk about Cyberpunk 2077? <laughs> yeah, it's like, Dylan, what is our game? Yeah, what is our number one? <laughs> yeah. It did not change for either. Speaking of, of sad that death. Was, uh, you yes. Know. There are, yeah, there are some in that. Yeah. Uh, why don't you take it away first, Dylan? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, this was my favorite game of 2020 back then and still now, you know. I haven't gotten a or i haven't gotten around to replaying it um mostly because i want to like replay it and eventually pick up the uh the dlc phantom liberty but i enjoyed playing it even back in the day when it wasn't fully featured when the driving was pretty terrible when you know like the ai was not the best when it had a bunch of bugs and stuff now thankfully Andrew and I didn't really run into a lot of those issues. I think that was mostly people having issues on like PC and like the old the base consoles. Yeah, the old gen consoles and stuff versus mm -hmm. like we were playing on Series X. And so like we we were kind of it was running at like it was running well on that. Given the, the most best part shot I could have. Yeah, like we didn't notice a whole lot of hitching. We didn't notice a whole lot of, you know, like graphical issues like for the most part it was other types of bugs like npcs being weird or you know whatever <laughs> yeah so, standard big rpg bugs like exactly items floating in the environment and whatnot yeah but i think the story of cyberpunk 2077 is fantastic um i really had no big touchstone in like cyberpunk stuff um beyond just like the fifth element and <laughs> like some other weird movies like that and so like getting to jump into like this world and it's cd project red so it's you know a fully realized world they do quests they do um like story stuff so well that i was just hooked you know i i wanted to know about all these characters you know like you've got like four four or five main characters that like you're doing stuff with kind of throughout the game um and all of them are pretty you know like there are a couple that maybe are a little bit boring but i think some of that was just i personally didn't care about their story like i didn't personally care as much about them but i can see how if they you know scratch that itch for you it's like boom i really care about this person's story but all of them even like the worst story was still interesting to follow and i still wanted to like i was still kind of waiting around for v's phone to ring and that person to call me back up and be like hey you know i did this you know let's meet me here and we'll you know progress the story basically so i loved exploring the world i loved the the shooting was way better like the the fighting mechanics were way better than i was expecting because it was cd project red and so my like they had done the witcher which you know is a, not a third shooter. person action yeah third person fantasy not a shooter um and arguably the combat is sometimes the weakest part of those games uh and so especially like witcher 2 and stuff and so so i was not expecting i was kind of expecting it to be like every time i try to play a fallout game where i jump in there and i'm just like i hate this uh and <laughs> It was not that. It was very much not that. And it was shockingly good. And the sto like the end of that story too, like with Keanu Reeves and just like the way that 
they left it sort of open ended, but also it kind of ended on a bummer as well. You know, I thought it was really <laughs> cool. Yeah, it, bummer. it could end on super bummers depending on which ending you go with. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, like the the best ending that you can get is still a bummer. Yeah, and which and is very like you said. Yeah, and it's you know very in keeping with like the nature of cyberpunk's world, but it was also like I thought it was very impactful. So. Yeah, so for me, Cyberpunk, like you said, it was my favorite game then, and it's the game itself has only gotten better. So since launch, they've had major updates. They've we played the Xbox One version on an Xbox Series X. Well, now the now the Series X version is out. They've released. They're currently on it on like update two point five or something. So they've released like two and a half major updates, and. They reworked like how the skill trees function, how like clothing works and how the cybernetics work. Like they reworked the guts of the game and made it a lot better, in my opinion. And along with that and along with like just making, you know, like the AI work and the cops work like they're supposed to and things like that. They also released the Phantom Liberty, which I played last year, and it's just more really excellent cyberpunk content and it's kind of like hearts of stone from the witcher 3 where it's like it's not a new world it's not like there's a new section of the city you can go to but it's more like a a very long and interesting quest that you're going on with like a few little side things you can go do but like you're mostly focusing on the main quest but it affects the endings you can have in the base game ultimately for me cyberpunk not my favorite setting first person not my favorite way to play a game especially coming off the witcher i was really bummed this wasn't a third person rpg but cd project red's writing and characters just like can't really be matched in my opinion and some of the characters in this game are like the best fully realized characters that i've encountered in a video game and that carries over into the DLC and then when you just add the kind of over the top nature of cyberpunk like one of the characters that I got attached to in the DLC that I thought was really interesting and like I was very one of the major players I'll put it that way like her body is mostly robotic (laughs) like it's just that kind (laughs) of world you know and so it's like And like you said, Dylan, I think the gameplay holds up, especially now being the best it's ever been, like the playing in the expansion. I was having a ton of fun running like a a critical headshot pistol build where I just like cycle through three different kinds of pistols and just like one shot enemies if I hit them in the head. And I was kind of like really fast moving, like on my feet kind of playthrough. I'd love to go through and experiment with a little bit more of the like cybernetic or like hacking style of gameplay because i haven't really done that as much but yeah and there's so much so much it's very dense whereas like the witcher is like very sprawling like you can beat this game in in like 25 hours or you can beat it in like 100 yeah because it's all just kind of like packed in there and Mm -hmm. you can kind of experience what you want um so yeah excellent game i don't think it will ever be topped if we revisit this list again like it's just it 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 just got better and i it was number one in 2020 so Mm. yeah i got to jackie's death and went hmm well this game had a sad ending and then never picked it up again (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. i got through like the prologue (laughs) yeah i was gonna say say, you didn't even really get to meet keanu reeves so no i think i did that like johnny silverhand and was like oh he's kind of a jerk Okay, well, let me put this uh, down yes. for a minute and then never picked it back <laughs> up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it's, it's a lot, especially if you're not, if you haven't played in like those kind of sandboxy open world like RPG games, like, you know, your no. Skyrims and whatnot. It can be a lot to kind of figure, like kind of navigate how those games play. But I think if you put it on like story mode and just kind of followed the main path for like, six hours or so mm-hmm. and got kind of into it i i could see you vibing with the characters in the story if you like mm-hmm. actually you know oh for sure yeah 
I just have a there. really atrocious habit of only like playing a new RPG once every six years when there have been like leaps and bounds and advancements made to UI and talent trees and this thing and that thing and whatever. And here's the new like industry standard because this game did it and it was so great. And I'll step into it after the closest thing to cyberpunk I've played has been Tomb Raider and go, eh. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> then like. Tomb Raider's not even an RPG, no, so not even close. <laughs> it's really yeah. bad. <laughs> some some of the games like Cyberpunk and like probably upcoming Dragon Age and whatnot, like you kind of have to commit yourself to the first few hours of your like mm-hmm. time with the game being learning it. It's like, all a learning curve. Yeah, yeah. I, I have yeah. to actually learn the language of this game, and then I can have fun playing it. Exactly. Yeah, which is not. It's truly not a bad thing, and. Cyberpunk does feel like a game that's worth it. Joe also recently put, like, beat it and Phantom Liberty. World of Warcraft slowed down, so it's like, all right, Cyberpunk, we're getting all the way through it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Joe, yes. Cool. Well, that is our 2020 Games of the Year list remade. We probably should have swapped our strategy because of... I didn't think we'd have as much overlap. I forgot that we'd have... As much overlap, so maybe like you know, I didn't, the front went faster than the back is what I'm trying to get yeah. to. But yeah, uh, do we any honorable mentions or shout outs that we don't say anything besides the names of the games that you guys could have been yes. on your list? Okay. Well, I have. I don't know that they could have made it to the list, but here are some games from 2020 that I have played, and I will say their names. And. Yeah. The varying degrees of w- how close they could have gotten to the list, but we'll go Immortals Phoenix Rising, Watch Dogs Legion, Marvel's Avengers, Bloodstained yeah. Curse <laughs> of the Moon, Gears Tactics, Hunt Showdown, oh, Darksiders yeah. Genesis, Dragon Ball Z, Kakarot, Astro's Playroom, and Mafia the Definitive Edition. I think Hunt Showdown was like a console. Yeah, release. console launch, not uh yeah. not not at PC launch, but yeah, those were the other, like those are the other games that I saw on lists that I was like, Oh, I've played those. And you know, I really enjoyed mafia for example, but it was yeah. like, it's not going to beat out some of these other games. What about you? So I have two, I broke mine into two. I've got my honorable mentions, which are ones that I played that just didn't make it to the list. It's mostly stuff that was on the list previously. So star Wars squadrons, phasmophobia, yeah. fuser, um, and then a little like uh, kind of slay the spire sort of type of game, Monster Train, yeah, which is is good. Um, so those are ones that I've played and beaten, and you know, just, or you know, as much as you can. And then I've got a separate list, which is ones that it's like I have not beaten this game. If I ever get around to beating it, it may actually end up on the list. Ah, uh, and so those games are Griftlands, which is also kind of a slay the spire type of game, but it's like a sci-fi story based one. Um, Immortals Phoenix Rising. That's a game that I really want to like get back to because I was really enjoying it when I played it. Uh, Murder by Numbers, <laughs> uh, which is a little pick cross like uh, mystery uh-huh. solving game on the Switch. Um, Persona 5 Royal. Uh, eventually, I will play that game all the way through. And Jacuza Like a Dragon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that came Eventu- out. Eventually, I will. Yeah, it came out like. Very For some reason, I thought you had beaten that one. Uh, no, I just played like 50 hours of it and got distracted and was like, I should get back to that game, but never, never managed to. So I do own it, so I can get into it. But All right. Aubrey, any from you? No, I struggled to come up with 10. <laughs> I, put a, I put a game I started yesterday on my list. Fair. <laughs> what do Fair. you mean? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, you just got some uh, other potential options from our lists. Yeah. Yes. Well, and and I'll shout out just the general PlayStation lineup that I eventually might play. Uh, that'll. I mean, it's mostly on a list. mostly Last of Us and Ghosts from 2020, I think. And Final Fantasy. What's the FromSoft one? Um, that's better than Sekiro. Oh, Demon um, Souls. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't play that till you have a PS5. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. That won't happen until you're 42. Yeah, until yeah, I, I get the say, PS6 and yeah, sell whenever Dylan you, my <laughs> Whenever Andrew gets the PS6, I will get his PS5, and then, you know, it'll be that cycle. 
and then I'll oh, only play it. that game, and then Andrew will assign me some Death Stranding two that I have to play, and I'll never <laughs> touch the console again. So. <laughs> What's the new one that's coming out? Is that why you're scared of your PlayStation? The new what? The new Kojima game. Death Strand. Oh it's one yeah, of he's them. he's doing that one with like Jordan Peele and all them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the he's also got Death Stranding two coming. Yeah. Oh no. Well, well pretty sure Norman Reedus doing. like spoiled it, <laughs> like saying yeah. that they were working on it before it was actually officially announced. Uh, yeah, so that has been our remake of the 2020 game of the year list. Uh, housekeeping. Anything specific? Aubrey's already teased her upcoming Spirit Fair video to make you cry. Um, or just listen to me cry, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I promise not to cry. I think uh, we'll have some, we'll have a, a Steel Rising video coming up on YouTube. And we recently did a few fantasy critic things over mm-hmm. there if you're interested in keeping up with the league anything else i'm forgetting on youtube dylan if you are watching this on youtube there are some video links that'll probably be up as you go through it but i know there is a hades video if you're interested in hearing our thoughts more in depth there cyberpunk uh i know there's a video andrew did oh yeah and there might be a link to a Parts of our little hope playthrough uh up there as Ooh. well a highlight reel yeah um so there uh there might be like if you're interested in hearing more about some of these games yeah maybe check out not only just the spirit fair video but some of these other ones on there too nice yeah uh and then as far as the podcast goes leave us a, a rating a review and help us out over there Uh, And if you want to come hang out with us, join our Discord server. The link is in the podcast description. Aubrey, do you have anything else for the people, the listeners, the wonderful, wonderful listeners? Uh, No. Stay safe out there. COVID's floating around again. So wash your hands. (laughs) Yep. Uh, I'm pretty sure I had it earlier this year, but... yeah. I'm not going to get jabbed up in the nose to find out. So (laughs) I was just sick. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that is it for this beefy episode, but it was a lot of fun and there were a lot of good games that came out Mm -hmm. in 2020. And then there was Marvel's Avengers and Watch Dogs Legion. So (laughs) with all of that, we will catch you all on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Friendly Neighborhood Gamers podcast. If so, we would greatly appreciate your help in growing the show and the community by giving us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any other podcasting app that allows it. We also have some great videos on our YouTube channel, including reviews, rankings, and other topics. We would really appreciate you checking it out. And if you want to keep up with everything going on in the neighborhood, follow us on Instagram and Twitter and feel free to jump in our Discord server. We hope to see you there. Links for everything are in the podcast description. Thanks again for listening. And remember, stay stay friendly, friendly, gamers. gamers.